This Power BI tutorial will be dealing with how to calculate cumulative total, so cumulative revenue over a financial year, so using a fiscal year. Welcome to computer tutoring. So um, this time what we're going to do is, let me just minimize myself here, uh, just explain what we've got now. But you'll be able to get this, I'll put a link down below so that you'll be able to see this video, okay, to see the, not the video, the, with this video that you can see the exercise files that come along with this tutorial. Now if I just, uh, let's just get rid of myself and zoom in over on the right hand side, just explain what you've got here. Oops, going in and out here. So over here on the right hand side you can see a series of fields, one of which has got dates sold. Now we're going to create a date or a calendar table that's going to be automatically generated from this date sold here. So if you haven't already done so, I strongly recommend that you view how to create a date table in Power BI. Uh, that video will just really give you some, you know, that power to create a date table will give you some tips and guidance if you feel that I've gone a little bit too far through this. All right then, so let's just do that, shall we? So if we uh, go into the modeling tab here at the top, make sure you're on the modeling tab. So you can see that one there. So make sure you're on the modeling tab. Then after that, if we click on new table just here, okay, then the new table comes up. We're gonna call this table dim dates. Okay, and the value of this one here is going to be a calendar. In fact, I'm holding down shift and enter to bring it down. Oh, get rid of those um, add columns there. That's it, dim date equals shift and enter to bring it down, escape to get rid of those horrible add columns that comes up each time. I'm going to type in calendar, uh, bring, give myself some breathing room here. So the way this calendar function works basically is you've got a start date. So you, uh, I'm, this one here, I'm going to make a date up and I'm interested in the year of the uh, fact, sorry, the year of the min of the fact sales and the, uh, I think it's order date, nope, date sold. Here we go. Great, uh, so that's one there. I'm gonna go minus one year, so it's one year in the past for whatever the current year is, because I wanna make sure that this is going to start on the first, so of April the first of whatever year that happens to be in. And the same with the maximum, so I'm gonna go year uh, the date is going to be the maximum of the fact sales date sold just here. That's great. And then I'm going to go plus one. And this will be the end of the financial year, which will be March the 31st. Brilliant. So if I press enter, uh, what I need to do just if I just zoom out again and just click here so you can actually just see the date table here I've got. Let me just zoom back in. So you can see the function here, yeah? So this one is the minimum. So the minimum amount is basically going to be the start of the year. So it's 2013, April the 1st is when I want this to actually start. So I think it's a year before my oldest sort of data that I've got there. Uh, and then I want it the year after the financial year, but up to March the 31st. So if I just, uh, if I just click on here and do control and the down arrow, I can, I don't know, just zoom in again. There we go. Just control and the down arrow. And if I just zoom in the bottom bit, you can see, there we go, 31st of March, 2020. So that's going to be, I think, a year after my data. So I've got plenty of dates to work with here. Okay, let's just zoom in at the top again, because what we're going to do is we need to extract certain information out of these dates here. So what's the first one? Uh, we're going to click on new column. I want to get the fiscal year or the financial year. So I'm going to put financial year. And then basically it's going to be an if the month of this date, okay, is greater than or equal to April. Brilliant, then I want the year to be, um, that's it, this year, and I put a little forward slash in, and next year, which I will pop in next year here, plus one, comma, great. Um, otherwise, if I just tab in a little bit, I want it to be last year. So I'll be year and then um, it will be dim date and then minus one and a little forward slash in when I see it. 
Okay, and then add year for the current year. Brilliant. So close off for the year, close off for the month. Let's just have a look, see how. So basically what's happening here is it's looking at this here, it's checking to see well, what month's going on here. So this is now the 1st of April. Okay, so it's here because it's the 4th. So that month is the 4th. So what it's doing here is it's then saying, okay, this is the current year, 2013, and the next year. But if I scroll down until I get to... Uh, let's get to another, um, if I go to a different month, let's go down. Here we go. So as soon as I get the, here, so you see this is m March here. Okay, so this is March 2014. So the financial year will be from 2013 to 2014. So that allows us to do it over the financial year. Great. So again, look at our dates, how to make a calendar table in Power BI will give you a bit more insight into how this works. But there we go. Uh, I always like to tidy this up a little bit. So basically, as the condition. If I click here and shift then to bring that down and tab that in a bit, that's good. And then I like have the last bracket here and just bring that down a little bit. Let's backspace one. Let's just go over here and just um, bring that back a bit. Great. So it's starting to come together. Let's just press enter. So I haven't mucked it up. Great. So that's the financial year. I, I also need a month. So I'm going to just click on a new column. Uh, and this I'm going to call it month name. And this is basically going to use a nice function. I like using the format one. It seems a little bit more reliable than um, just using the, the dot with a date on it. So uh, I'm just going to do format that date and I'm going to do it as four M's, which will bring back the month name. So I can see that's April. Now it's nearly uh, there. I just need one more column. And if you've seen more in these in the past series, you'll understand why I need to have a month number. So here I'm just going to have a quick. Um, so this month number here, I want it to be financial month. So actually what I need it to do, I can't just extract the month number. I need to switch it. So I'm going to use a switch statement. So I'm going to use a switch statement to look at the month of the dates just here. Okay. Uh, and then I'm just going to write in a bit of codes uh, just to switch it basically. So if it is happens to be April here, I want the order to be one. Yeah. If it's May, I want the order to be two and, and so on basically. So if it's six, then it's yeah. So this is sorting out the month order. So I'm doing it this way. So uh, that uh, when I pop it into visualizations on the actual uh, reports, then the months appear April to March. So there we go. Eight. There we go. So if it's really 12, and that's nine, and then it's back to one, and that'd be 10. And if it's two, that'd be 11. And then the last one is a catch all 12. So that last one, I don't know if you can see here. Uh, let me just, just do that so you can put it. So that last one here uh, means it's a catch all. So if it's four, it's one. If it's five, it's two. If it's six, it's three. If it's seven, it's four. So far until the last one, then it will be, uh, if it's none of those, it will be then 12. Okay, great. So let me just, uh, just press escape on that one. Let's just uh, enter that one in here. Um, sometimes I've just got to, let's yeah, so just zoom back. Let's press enter. There we go. And yeah, so we can see that the month, here we go. April is month one in the financial month. In fact, it might be an idea, I'm just thinking it's just a thought, just have a, I'm gonna call it financial, financial, there we go. So that's the financial month number. And the same with the month name. Um, this one is gonna be called financial name, month name. So let me just rename that one. Financial month name. Now I want this one, nearly done, but I want this one to be sorted by the financial month number. So now whenever I drag this out onto a visualization, it's going to go April to March instead of January to December or April to September, which will be alphabetical. Great. Hope you're still with me. <laughs> okay, I know there's a lot there to do it. So there's a few things that I want to do here. What I like to do is if I'm going to use date calculations, I like to mark dim date up here as a date table. So at the top, I can click and mark as date table uh, if I wanted to. So let me just get rid of my set. Stop the flashing there. That's good. Go to date table and OK. 
So that helps us. Uh, I find that just helps me make. Um, I think find that out just helps time intelligence functions, which we're going to do a bit later on, run a bit smoothly if you need to. Um, so it's always good to turn that on. We're not technically using any time intelligence functions with this, like we're not going back in time or anything. But um, um, yeah, so here we go. Righty then, so uh, nearly there. So if we now go and we click on our modeling button just over here, there we've got date in dim date. Just going to drag it to date sold over here. You can see the relationship comes up one to one. I think there's only one sale, you know, there's not, there's no two sales on the same date, in fact, sales, which is why I've got one to one relationship, but it's not a good one. The structure should be one to many. So I've double clicked on the line here. And if I just go over here, you can see that's one to one. I'm just going to change it to one to many. And then the cross filter direction, if you notice, this has got lot arrows in both ways which means I can filter in either direction which is pretty typical for a one-to-one -one relationship but I don't want that to happen I don't really want fact sales to filter dim date I want to filter it the other way in my visualizations so I'm going to change this to single make sure dim dates at the top fact sales at the bottom one to many here if it's the other way around and you had fact sales up here and dim date here then you might have to have many to one but if it's the same as mine here one to many that's great click on OK and there we have that one to many there relationship. So now if we go to our visualizations, we can start shoving stuff onto the, the, the page there. So let's just do that. If I just zoom in so you can really see what I'm doing. So first thing I'm doing is clicking on this line chart here. And you can see it's got a line chart that's added over here. And I can click and make this a little bigger. That's great. So now I want to add things to the line chart. So generally what you would do is under fact sales, I would drag total and drag that into values just over here. Let's just do that again, shall we? That's good. And then the months or the financial month name, if I can find the right one here, would go into axis just here. And you can see the chart starting to build up here. So this is basically averaged out. Okay. Uh, also the total of all of them. Um, if I look at, for instance, the totals just here, I can see it's added as a sum. So that's the total here. Okay. And then last but not least, I want to see it broken down by a fist financial year. So I'm going to drag financial year into legend just here. And then I can see it all broken down here. Great. All right. But I think you could admit that it all looks a little bit higgledy piggledy, doesn't it? I mean, let's just have a quick look, see if I can drag it out. Yeah. I mean, if I just change some of the charts here to the you know, this area chart or stacked area chart, that's looking a bit, bit better here. But I think you can see it's all a bit, oh dear. So how do I solve this? issue well I have to do this by means of a measure and the measure we're going to do is called years to date or dates y to d now how do I do that so let me just get rid of myself over here what I normally do when I'm doing measures is I usually create a measures table so for that I'm going to go up to the top and under the home tab here I'm going to click on this enter data button so it's just that enter data button just there so uh, when you click on that that will then open up this um, just do that again so you can see this create table option and then down the bottom here, I'm just going to highlight that and create a table called my measures. Okay. So it keeps all the measures in one place. It's a very handy thing to do. So that's good. So click on load and then we can see that we have our measures table. If you just look right across to the right hand side, you can see my measures table. Okay, right, back in the room, just had a bit of a phone call there. So just want to quickly get this measure done so I can show you and then I've got to go and just check a, uh, another issue as well. So what we need to do is we've got a My Measures table. So let's get rid of myself and just go over here and we have a My Measures table over here. What I'm going to get you to do is going to right click on here and we're going to go to New Measure. Okay, so we're going to go to New Measure and there's our new measure up here. So let's go and write it. So we're going to call this one Cumulative. That's it. Uh, revenue. Okay, so that's this one here. In fact, it's basically total total rev YTD. Okay, and then the basic formula goes this way. First, you've got calculates. So the calculate function is used across the board very handy function please look at our other tutorials if you're not sure as to how you can use that then we need to, an expression or an aggregate function so we're going to sum everything in fact sales 
uh, which is total in there like so. So there's a little gap at the end there, that's my mistake, but uh, it's right, that will work. Then a comma, then we're gonna use dates ytd. So this is a filter function that we're putting in the second argument of the calculate function. We need to have dim dates and a date for this one here, which is dates ytd. And then um, what we're then gonna do is we are going to um, set a year end date. So our year end date is the 31st of the third uh, there. So close off the different brackets there. That's great. I'm just gonna quickly go into the modeling tab here at the top and change this to pounds and pence. Okay, if you're not sure how to do that, then please, yeah. That's great. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go over here onto this right-hand side, and then I'm going to just get rid of total just here, and then I'm just gonna drag in total rev yt date into values. Okay, and so if I just zoom back here, you can now see them all coming up here, which is great. Yeah, that's good. Now there's one extra issue that I'm just going to, let's get myself back in here. So there's one extra issue that we really want to sort of focus on. Uh, let's just show you what I mean with this extra issue here. If I just move myself out of the way and I'm just going to filter out, I'll tell you what, I'll use a slicer for this one. So if I drag a slicer and then drag financial year into the slicer, and I'm just interested in 2019 to 20. So do you can, can you see the issue here? So if you come up here, you've got April, May, June, July, nice cumulative totals. When you get to the top, yeah, it's got two, five. Why has it got this? Well, that's basically because even though, in fact, internet sales, there's no data, the data still exists in the calendar table. So I need to stop that from happening, yeah? So I don't want any data to continue after July because I don't have any data after July for this financial year. So how do I, oops, just go there, that's good. So how do I go about that? Well, I just need to make a slight addition or um, amendment to that year-to-date measure. So let's do that, shall we? So if we go over and then just click on the total revenue YTD just over here, just go over to the top here and I'm just gonna click just before the C and hold shift, press enter a couple of times. So this is a nice one. So I'm just gonna check to see if the count rows off the fact sales is greater than zero, comma, okay. Then it's going to do this basically. So it will just do this next one. So if I click at the end, that's it. Gonna wait. Then to press enter, shift and enter to go down. There we go. So. I'm just going to tab it in here as well, just so it makes it look good. So if the if a row exists, basically, in fact, sales, then do this calculation. Otherwise, it's well, it's just going to do nothing. So if I press enter, and then just let me zoom back so you can see, and there we go. So it's now going only April up to July here, yeah, because there's no other rows exist. Now, if I hold down control and click on this here, and I'm comparing, say, 2018 to 2019, uh, as you can see there, if I'm comparing that, uh, yeah, you can see that I've got details for the full amount of this year. So you can see that I've got the details for the full amount of this year here. Let's go back. But I've only got it up to July for 2018 and 2000, say 2019 to 2020. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've got something out of this. Um, we've got more videos, more Power BI tutorials to come. So we've, I, I did promise a bell curve, so I will do that one as well. So uh, also looking at outliers as well. Um, there's many others to, to come. And I haven't forgotten also my other videos that I've got. I know people are waiting with Visio and Publisher. It's just been absolutely crazy. So yeah, it's been really good. So we'll, we'll get, I will get round to those and um, uh, future videos and those uh, future tutorials and those other uh, applications. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so so you don't miss anything. Uh, click on the notifications button if you want to. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching.